driving. To some, it's a daily routine, something they hate but have to do, like paying taxes or vacuuming your house. But to others, especially myself, it's one of the greatest experiences on this planet. Hearing the loud roar of the engine hurling the flesh and blood inside the cockpit through each turn of the circuit is an atmosphere that words simply cannot describe. For children of wealthy families, they are able to live out this fantasy of theirs and pursue their dreams of one day reaching the top echelon of motorsport. But for others that simply can't afford it, or developed interest in the sport at a much later age, they will commonly turn to what is known as sim racing. Sim racing is the collective term for racing game software that attempts to accurately simulate auto racing, complete with real-world variables such as fuel usage, damage, tire wear and grip, and suspension settings. Sim racing is relatively cheap and easy to get into, as a Logitech wheel and some pedals can be all you need to start your virtual racing career. But of course, you need to figure out what simulator is right for you. There are a lot to choose from, but it's generally accepted that the big three of Assetto Corsa, iRacing, and R-Factor are the ones that you should turn to. But what if those don't entice you, and you play on a console instead of a PC? Well, Slightly Mad Studios has you covered, as on September 22nd of 2017, Project Cars 2 was released, but to lukewarm reception. Has that consensus changed in the five years that this game has been out for? This video will take you on an in-depth journey about the development and production of this game and how it holds up in 2023. So sit back and relax, this is Project Cars 2, Sim Racing's Black Sheep. Project Cars 2 is a motorsport racing simulator that was developed by Slightly Mad Studios and published by Bondi Namco Entertainment Group. Slightly Mad is a company with a rich history of racing games, most notably the Need for Speed Shift titles, which released after the studio bought out the business and assets of Blimey Games from bankrupt parent company Tentacle Studios at the beginning of 2009. Project Cars 2 is produced by Andy Cherry, a quality assurance tester turned producer for Slightly Mad Studios, who as of November of 2020 is now the senior producer for Mediatonic Games, the studio behind a small, free-to-play game that you may have heard of. The brains behind this game most notably include Stephen A. Dunn, Anders Johansson, and Ian Wallington, whom all have extensive knowledge and decades of programming experience. Project Cars 2 received a worldwide release on the 22nd of September 2017, releasing for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows platforms. For those that use Mac computers, I cannot confirm that this title ever officially released for you guys, but if someone does manage to find this information, please do feel free to mention it in the comments below. Following the success of the first Project Cars game, funding began to open for Project Cars 2 on the 23rd of June 2015. Slightly Mad Studios opened donations through the Project Cars 2 official forum. Members and visitors choosing to donate had the option to, using their membership through the forums. In exchange, donors could gain access to early development builds and could send their thoughts, opinions, and suggestions critical to the progress of the game directly to the dev team for feedback. On the 8th of February 2017, Project Cars 2 was officially announced with a release date slated for later in the year. Slightly Mad Studios soon revealed that the game was going to consist of 182 cars from 38 different manufacturers and a variety of car and race car classes, with new additions including the Honda Civic, Jaguar XJ220, Toyota GT86, and Nissan R89C. The game also has a larger track roster, with 46 tracks with 121 unique layouts, the majority being laser scan circuits, and new additions including Fuji Speedway, Knock Hill, Long Beach, California, and the Dirtfish Rallycross track, which is located in Washington State. A new time and weather system was also included in game, which can allow for multiple different changing weather conditions and changes within a given season. The game uses the proprietary Madness engine, which enables highly detailed vehicle simulation using a custom physics engine called Livetrack 3.0, which brings realistic track conditions throughout a race weekend. Sim racers will often look to participate in leagues where they can fight for championships, and Slightly Mad took this into consideration for the game, as the online mode has been developed with a focus on esports in mind, bringing an online ranking system, online championships, and better functionality in matchmaking. They also partnered with IndyCar, which includes the entire lineup of the 2016 season, the IndyCar official logo, and the Indy 500. Through the months leading up to release day, Slightly Mad worked closely with auto manufacturers, auto industry companies, and race car drivers to help them in making an accurate simulation. As a result, cars have specific performance characteristics and represent their real-life counterpart accurately. The game received a hefty amount of post-launch content, with five DLC packs released within the following year, adding a total of six different tracks and 38 new cars. Upon first booting up the game, you're greeted with an opening cinematic, which has been playing in the background of this video. It's been completely rendered in game and showcases the raw power of the Madness engine as well as Live Track 3.0. Once the cinematic concludes or you decide to skip it, you're then taken to the main menu, which is your hub for everything Project Cars 2. One thing that is immediately apparent is the very user-friendly UI. All the options are right in front of you and don't require a ton of button presses and self-doubt to navigate. All with some of the best background music to a sim racer I've ever heard. 
The score was composed by Stephen Bastead, a British composer with a long and storied history of creating music for sim racing games. You may know him from the Need for Speed Shift titles, as he composed the main score for that game. Additionally, he has also worked on the Blimey Games titles, which are FIA-certified sim racing games, as well as The Walking Dead Assault. Circling back to the main menu, let's go over what this game has to offer. Over to your far left is the Career tab. This is where you start your virtual motorsport career. There are different motorsport disciplines that you can choose from, each with its own tier, and you can have up to five career saves at any given time. For example, if I wanted to start my journey to Formula 1, I would start at Tier 6 with either Kart 1 or Formula Rookie. From there, you would progress from Karts to Cars with Tier 5, which is Formula C, then you would move up once more to Formula Renault 3.5, and finally to Formula 1, or Formula A as it's called in this game. The same style of progression is true for if you want to start endurance racing. You'd go from sports car lights, to the prototypes, to LMP3, and then finally you'd get to the endurance championship. Of course, you don't have to progress all the way up if you don't want to, you can always start wherever you want, but if you want to live out how an actual driver works their way up the ladder, this is the way to do it. Now the next tab is the first one you'll see every single time you boot up the game, Quick Play. Here you can create your own custom offline races, partake in your own test session, join online lobbies, as well as create your own. However, you'll most likely end up spending a majority of your time inside the custom event mode. This right here is your ultimate driving playground. You can choose any car you'd like, whether racing spec or a road car. You can even choose what paint job or livery you'd like to put on it. Then you can choose from 46 tracks with 121 different layouts and tailor any options to better suit what type of player you are. For example, if you want to start a race that replicates the real on track action, just click Motorsport Presets. Selecting one of these presets will automatically pre-configure the settings based on what event you want to do. So if you're feeling up for an IndyCar race, just click the IndyCar preset and the settings will be automatically adjusted for you to include the oval and circuit race types, 20 lap races with a rolling start, as well as one practice and one qualifying session, all against 31 AI opponents with full and authentic rules from the real life sport. You can also set your race setup as a favorite for quick and easy access if you ever want to come back to it. Next up is the community tab, which is your one-stop shop for anything esports related for Project Cars 2. Most of these menus lay dormant, however, as the dev team have shifted their focus to future projects, as well as Project Cars 3, which we will cover in just a little bit. The next tab is your profile, which shows all your information about on and offline play, and this is also the place where you can view your in-game screenshots and full-length race replays. Next up is the Options tab, which allows you to adjust gameplay, graphics, camera, controls, screen calibration, audio, and even allows you to configure the game for external apps that will monitor your telemetry during races. Inside the graphics menu, you can adjust everything from post-processing filters to exterior and interior sun flare, bloom, heat haze, exposure, rain, vignette, sun rays, screen dirt, and cockpit mirrors. As far as gameplay goes, you can make the game as sim or arcade based as you want. So many options can be tweaked and adjusted to your heart's content, from something as simple as a complex damage model, to even being able to manually start your engine, as well as drive and park in your own pit stop spot during races. Lastly, we have the Extras tab. This is where you can view the Project Cars team's social media sites and view the in-game credits. Oh boy, the kicker. How does the game handle? Well, for a controller player, the game handles fine, but the wheel and pedals are definitely the better option here, especially if you bought this game with a wheel in mind. The car feels like a person. You tell it what to do, and it listens to you. The game does a great job at showcasing the real raw power of these beautiful machines, and while you may be apprehensive to it, I do recommend the manual transmission on controller since it does allow you to better control the power of whatever you're driving to keep the back end from sliding out behind you. Now, if you want a really easy try to get used to the handling model on this game, try the one that I'm on right now, the Red Bull Ring. It's a quick and easy lap with fairly simple corners to navigate. Just run a practice session here and take as many laps as you need to really learn the track. Make sure you experiment with different vehicles though, because no two cars in this game will handle the exact same. And that's what drew me into sim racing from the start. It's not just the fact that I enjoy cars and motorsport in general, it's because I've played so many arcade racers and simcade games where the handling is super unrealistic and the cars can just fly through corners with little effort required. Simulation gives me a challenge, because if you try to whip one of these cars into turn 1 at Monaco, you'll hit the wall immediately. Okay, now for the Achilles heel. I touched on this briefly at the start of the video, but now I get to go more in depth. So with everything I just told you, one would think that this game would be a smash hit upon launch, right? Well, apparently it's not so. A lot of the reviews upon launch complain about inconsistent AI and handling that will turn away the controller crowd. Richard Wakeling of GameSpot awarded it a 7 out of 10, stating, quote, When it all works as intended, Project Cars 2 is a brilliant simulation racer provided you're playing with a wheel. It's ambitious in scope and depth, and the sheer breadth of available motorsports almost guarantees there's something for everyone to sink their teeth into. It's a shame, then, that there's always this nagging feeling in the back of your mind that a bug or a moment of AI madness will disrupt the whole thing, and more often than not, it will. These issues may be ironed out in the coming weeks and months, 
but with potentially stiff competition on the very near horizon, Slightly Mad Studios might not have enough time to capture the hearts and minds of video game racing fans before they move on to pastures new. And ironed out those issues would be, as aside from those few outliers, Project Cars 2 received generally favorable reviews from critics. IGN reviewed the highest, giving Project Cars 2 a 9.2 out of 10, and the lowest rating being from Electronic Gaming Monthly, who gave the game a 6 out of 10. Project Cars 2 was the 17th best Xbox game of the year on Metacritic, and reaching number 2 on the UK sales charts just behind Destiny 2. When it comes to recognition, Project Cars 2 was either nominated or won an award. In 2017, Project Cars 2 won Wired UK's Best Racing Game Award. At Gamescom 2017, they were nominated for both Best Booth Award and Best Racing Game, and they won the award for Best Simulation Game. They were nominated for Best Audio at the Golden Joystick Awards, nominated for Best Sports Slash Racing Game at TGA, and nominated for Best Sport Slash Driving Game at the Titanium Awards. At Gameblog 2017, they won Best Racing Game, and in 2018, at the 21st Annual DICE Awards, which is a video game awards ceremony held by the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, they were nominated for Racing Game of the Year. Given the success of Project Cars 2, it only made sense to develop a third installment, and in December of 2018, Slightly Mad Studios CEO Ian Bell had confirmed that a new installment in the series was in development, wanting to switch things up while still innovating and improving on the previous installments. But, as we'll come to find out, a change of direction can only take you so far. Now, I could have seen this coming a mile away. Slightly Mad Studios was acquired by Codemasters sometime during development of Project Cars 3, which was in turn acquired by Electronic Arts. Ian Bell stated that the game is a spiritual successor to the Need for Speed Shift series, which was also developed by Slightly Mad Studios. Now, because the studio was acquired by Codemasters, that means that the game would show similarities to games that Codemasters put out, namely the Touring Car Race Driver series, as well as what it would later turn into, Grid. Project Cars 3 received its first game trailer on the 3rd of June 2020, and it looked like we might be in for something special. Sadly, however, that wasn't the case. On the 28th of August 2020, the game was released to either mixed or poor reviews, being criticized for a departure from its features compared to its predecessors. I really wanted to like this game, honestly, but one big outlier that I just cannot ignore was the game did not utilize Codemasters Ego Engine, which boasted much higher graphic fidelity and performance. Additionally, unlike its predecessors, the game does not feature tire wear or fuel depletion, and as such, there are no pit stops. Despite winning Gamescom 2020's Best Simulation Game Award, the game became so fundamentally different from previous entries that it single-handedly ripped the soul out of the franchise. Following the acquisition of Codemasters by Electronic Arts, the Project Cars IP was later shut down in 2021. The series was set for a fourth title sometime in 2024, but this was eventually cancelled by its owner Electronic Arts in November of last year. Circling back to Project Cars 2 now, if you were to ask me what I think is the strongest of the three titles, it would have to be this one. The developers knew what they had in mind for this game from the moment they hit the ground running. They had a goal, which I think is what made them focus on delivering a realistic erasing experience as possible. When you look at the first game, it's good for what it is, but the first game is never really supposed to be the best one. Generally speaking, your first release is supposed to serve as a baseline for future installments to improve upon. Just look at Gran Turismo. With Project Cars 3, it just feels corporatized. The game was played with outside interference from Codemasters, as well as Electronic Arts, and I feel like that ruined what could have potentially been a fantastic racing game. Another game that was in this very same situation in a sense was Drive Club, which is another one of my favorite racing titles. Drive Club may very well be the single greatest game from a visual standpoint. Evolution Studios poured their heart and soul into this game, but once again, outside interference would come into play, and Sony would close the studio in 2016 after 55 members were cut, which was half of its population. They would later merge with Codemasters and then in 2022 would join Criterion Games. During this time, they had little to no opportunity to work on Drive Club, which meant that no DLC was being released and the game was barely supported. In March of 2020, the Drive Club servers would go offline almost a year after the game was delisted from the PlayStation Store. If you take anything away from this video, it's that corporate greed and their awful and rash business decisions can strike from anywhere at any time. A once beloved franchise is now gone for good. Thanks for the memories, Slightly Mad Studios and Project Cars. This is a racing series that will never be forgotten. Thank you all so very much for watching. I think I've found my niche now with retrospective content, especially if it pertains to genres that I'm passionate about. As much as I'd like to commit to a consistent upload schedule, that's just not possible given my current situation. I've been working a ton of hours this summer as a barista to try and improve my financial situation right now. And as we get closer and closer to the end of the month, I'm planning on pre-recording some videos to tide you guys over for the following week. I'm not sure if I told you guys publicly on the channel, maybe at least in my Discord server, but on August 4th, I'll be getting my wisdom teeth removed. All four of them to be exact, because they're impacted. 
There's a bunch of different meds and whatnot that I have to pick up and start taking a week before the appointment, so my focus will be solely on preparing for the operation. I'm not really scared about the procedure as I've gotten teeth taken out before, the only issue I have is that I've never been knocked out for a surgery before, so when I'm out and they're working on my teeth, if something were to go wrong, which almost definitely won't since this surgeon has probably done 6 million wisdom teeth extractions in their lifetime, if something were to go wrong, I won't know about it until after I wake up. I don't know, that's just the part that leaves me a bit uneasy at the end of the day. I'm sure I'm just getting myself all worked up over nothing though. Anyways, to close this out, I want to extend my personal thank you to Nick, aka Probreborn, for inspiring me to make a new retrospective video. He just recently released a video covering Battlefield 2042, two years after the game's release, and it's about to crack 70,000 views. I'll link that video in the description, and massive congratulations to him. With that said, thanks everyone for watching. If at any point you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more content like this, do me a favor and hit like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and share this video with a friend, as all the support helps the channel greatly. And I'll see you all in whatever video I upload next. Take care.